Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL Series, Episode 14. This will be an introduction to attributes. It'll be also a very short one, so let's get right to it. Uh, as we can see here, we're going to go right into the intro. Everything here that we have in the JS is all the same until we hit the draw function. So we have our resizer and all that. And what we're going to have, a few things here, is we're going to have a new API, get attrib location. We're going to pass it the program, which is a uh, defined right here. It's global within the context of here. So we're going to set it, and we're going to be using it multiple places. Um, and then we're going to get th the attribute a position uh, within our vertex shader, which we'll show in just a moment. And if we get one that's below zero, then it didn't actually get that storage location from uh, WebGL in the GL instance. And then we're going to pass to the GL instance this vertex attrib 3f for float with these three values. And then everything else is the same as before. As we render, it's going to be just our square as before. So what we're doing is we're setting this 3f value to be 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0, etc. And when we go ahead and look at the vertex shader here, we can see uh, we're having this attribute, and it's vec4 here, and it's only vec3 here. We can actually pass a vec4, um, but the fact is it doesn't need to be the same right here. Um, because the fourth one is the, let's see, RGB alpha, and alpha is assumed to be on. Uh, so it's the GL position is a vec4, though, and that's what needs to be set. Uh, every value um, for a vertex and it needs to have its own one-to-one -one attribute in terms of vec4s. And you always need to set your GL position within your vertex shader here. So we're going to be setting it to whatever is defined from the JavaScript. Well, well, this is valuable, um, we'll see later on that it's a lot more valuable uh, when you're able to pass in dynamic values here rather than just a single little thing like this. But this will end up making things a lot more uh, abstract and movable, and uh, you can do a lot of interesting things with timing in your code. Uh, the fragment shader is also the same, and you'll be able to, later on you'll see, being able to pass things to that as well. So that's it for today's episode. Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe, and you should please check out our newsletter as well. Thank you.